Hello, a great welcome to this series on Abacus. Myself, Jairajan P. This is tutorial number four and explains the modeling and analysis of a simple truss structure. Please note that the link for the playlist for all Abacus tutorials is given under the description of the respective videos. So let us first read the problem statement. So the truss structure considered for the analysis in Abacus is shown here. As you can see that it is a simple triangular truss structure and has a total base dimension of 4 meters and a height of 1.5 meters. The left support is pinned at the point A and the right support is on rollers at point C. The roller is supported on a plane inclined at 30 degrees to the horizontal. The truss is subjected to two loads a concentrated downward load of 4 kN at the point B and a horizontal load of 3 kN at the point D. So the cross section area of each member is taken as 100 mm square that is equal to 1 into W to minus 4 meters square. So let us start modeling in Abacus. So we have set the working directory and the job is named as a trust.cae. So let us straight away start creating the part okay so press the part so we will name this part as a truss and we'll select it's a 2d planner truss deform build and some wire element continue now the sketcher is available to us so we will start uh, sketching the entire truss first okay so we will start uh, sketching it using the line elements so you can say that we'll start from zero zero then uh, we can go to 2, 0, or I shall go first minus 2, 0, okay. And from minus 2, 0, I will go to directly 0, 1.5, okay, that's good. And from here, I will go straight to 2, 0, okay. So, and from here again, back to the origin, I will go. So, yes, we find that our truss is complete. Only thing is that we have to add the vertical number. So, what we do is that we will just pick this number, pick this node, we will draw this. So this means that our uh, truss is complete. So we can uh, sketch the section, it's uh, completed, done. So we can say that yes, the part of truss is available to us. And remember here, you need not to create the parts member by member, you can sketch the entire truss. Now we shall go for the second module, that's a property. So in the property, first we shall define the property, let me call it as a steel. And uh, here we are interested only in the elastic property. Go to mechanical, elastic. We shall follow the Newton and meters unit. So accordingly, this will feed us 2E8 and the Poisson ratio will be 0 0.30. Okay. Next, we shall proceed for uh, the creation of the section. So I will call it as a section truss. Truss, I will select beam and the truss continue and then material will be okay for me. And here, as for the truss element, we have to provide the cross section area. And this cross section area, as stated in the problem um, statement, uh, it is uh, 100 mm square, which, me, which will be 1 e minus 4 meters square. Okay, so we have to provide the cross section area. Okay, that is given over here. So this means that. We have created the section for us. Okay, we have to assign this section to the entire truss. So it asks us to select the regions to be assigned the section. So we will select the full truss. Okay, so the section is a section truss. That is good enough. Okay, fine. So this means that we have assigned our sections correctly to all the members of the truss. So that's all for I think the property module. Now next, uh, assembly. In the assembly, we have to create only one instance because we have only one part. So go over here. So the instance, select the truss. Okay, so this means that we have created uh, the assembly also. So next from the assembly, we can go straight to the step. And the step obviously, we have to create a new step for the definition of the load. So let me call it as a step load, okay? And that will be placed after the default step of initial created by Abacus. We will select the analysis procedure as a static general, continue. 
and uh, we will keep all the default options okay and uh, ensure that NLGOM is a certificate of which takes care of what we call as the large displacement problems so this is okay for us and here one more thing we need to tell backers what must be our field output so, so here we can go straight to the field output we call it as field output to trust trust okay and this is my step current step continue so i am interested in stressors i am interested in the displacement i am interested in the forces and the reactions so that is okay for me so we have created uh, the field output uh, according to which uh, the packers will write the proper output variables to the uh, odb file okay so we have uh, completed our uh, stuff module now there is no interaction here because it's basically not a contact problem so the, we can straight away go to the load module and in the load module uh, we have two tasks one is to specify the boundary condition next one is uh, defining the loads now here one uh, important task is that we know that the role of support okay that is uh, on the right side okay it is basically it is not on a horizontal plane it is on an inclined plane which means that we have to create a new data axis here which is inclined at 30 degrees right so anyway let us first create a boundary condition at this edge so i will call it as okay i'll just press it so bc i'll call it as bc pint bc pint that is very simple for me and remember that our boundary conditions will be in the initial default step created automatically by a bagus so we'll have a mechanical displacement rotation continue and it asks select the regions obviously this is only one region that is my left support and here i want to restrain both the u1 and u2 that is my x and y displacements okay fine so that's good enough now what we have to do is we have to create a data axis at this point that is inclined at 30 degree so let me just make it a little bit smaller okay this is good enough okay now first what you need to do is the step is very simple first create an atom axis which is inclined at 30 degree to the horizontal because you know that the roller support is uh, on an inclined plane so let us create the datum axis so here we have an option create a datum axis okay rotate from line just click it you're okay, fine so it asks you select a straight line from which to rotate i want to rotate from this reference line okay Select a point about which to rotate. I want to rotate it about this point. Okay. Angle of rotation, obviously, we know that is 30 degrees. Okay. Now you see here a new datum axis is selected. And we know that our roller support has to be provided along the support. Okay. So this is my datum axis. Once the datum axis is created, we need to define uh, our datum, uh, that is a datum coordinate system very specific to this axis so what we can do is we can go here here we have a created datum csys that's a new coordinate system so we are going to now based on this datum axis we are going to create a new datum coordinate system and we will use this new coordinate system for uh, aligning the boundary conditions for my roller support okay so just so this is created datum coordinate system using two lines so just press it okay now obviously i want to have a rectangular one okay i will call it as for example this is uh, the new one that's created for my trust structure now it's a rectangular one continue now it asks you select the straight line to be the x-axis i want this to be my x-axis okay so i can select it now select a straight line to be in the xy plane Obviously, I can select this. This is to be in the XY plane. Okay. So, this means that that is over. So, you can see, look here. Now, you can see that the local X axis, let me just zoom this a little bit. You can see that a new data coordinate system is now set up at this point. Okay. And this coordinate system will be used to specify the boundary condition for the roller end. Okay. Very good. Now, we can go for specifying the boundary conditions at this end. So I'll create a new boundary condition. I'll call it as a BC roller. 
and mechanical displacement okay and uh, it asks me select the regions obviously this is my point okay I'm done now here by default uh, this is uh, my abacus is using the global system but I don't want it to use the global system I want to use the new datum says so what you do is go over here edit okay and the edit you have got a system of the datum list so this is the datum new datum uh, coordinate system I have created okay for me so I, I have selected that you can see that yes my coordinate system is right now not the global one it's a datum sys trust which we have just now created and we know that along for this roller end the x-axis will be along this line and my y coordinate will be perpendicular to this line so we know that along x-axis it is allowed to move and we have to restrain it only in the this y direction okay okay this y direction okay okay so now look here so you can see that this my roller support it is correctly aligned perpendicular to this line along my y direction so this means that our boundary condition is rightly specified now you can we can straight away go for uh, specifying the loads okay so okay fine so now that we have if you remember we have two loads we have a particular load of 4 kN applied at a lower node and we have a horizontal load of 3 kN applied at the upper node okay so what we can do is let me just go for uh, load 1 I have applied it as a 3 kN 3 kN this is just for the uh, easiness in identifying okay so obviously it should be applied at here so load 1 3 kN is applied horizontal it's a concentrated force continue now select the point so I want to apply it over here okay select it done now obviously this is acting in the positive x direction so you can give it as directly 3 kN because we are following a kN meter system and remember we are in the global system only now there is no no need to change it to the newly created datum coordinate system so c of 1 in the x direction we are going to click on that this is okay fine fantastic we have applied this load in the horizontal direction now we can apply a load of a 4 kN in the downward direction at this node so in a similar way what I, what I will do is I'll, I'll just write it as 4 kN you can also add it as a down okay so we can easily we'll be able to easily identify it we'll apply it in the same analysis step okay concentrated force fantastic continue now it asks you the select the point select it done now this is in the two direction okay as a downward means that you should write it as minus four okay yes so means that our load application is also over right so we have uh, provided the right boundary condition and we have applied the loads at the right locations this means so let me just save it okay this means now we are ready to go to the next one that is the mesh now here one thing is that it's a truss element so truss element do not require any kind of a meshing along its span length along its member length so this means that we need not to divide this member into any segments so accordingly for me the global meshing is not important the global seeding is not important i will just use the local seeding and i will instruct the backers you split every member only into as one member that means no subdivision so what you do is you go here that is seed seed edges so this is normally we call it as a local seed seed edges okay fine so part instances so whenever we have to do the meshing ensure that you highlight not the assembly you highlight the part okay fine so go to now right now it's okay now select the regions to be assigned the local seeds so i want that the local seeds to be applied from the entire one okay done now i will instruct a backers okay you please do the local seeds not by the size by the number so now it asks you sizing controls how many elements so every member I want to I don't want to subdivide which means that I want to keep the number of elements as one only okay so I will okay so now you will find that yes the local seeds are directly applied which means that this will not be divided along its length okay so every member is retained as a single member only because that is good enough for the truss analysis okay 
Now you can straight away go for uh, the selection of the right element. You click this button and they ask you what are the numbers to be assigned this members to be assigned. So, okay, I'll select the members. Now what we can do is we can select my family as the trust and uh, that's okay. So we can see that the element that we assigned is it's a two node, it's a two node linear 2D trust. That is known as T2 D2 element. Okay, that's okay. So means we have assigned the elements also. After assigning the elements, we can straight away go for the meshing. Just to mesh it. We don't have any meshing as such, but we have to do the meshing also to tell Abacus it's being rightly meshed. Yes. Okay, so the meshing is over. You can see that the color has changed. Now I think uh, we have completed all activities. Now we are ready to run the analysis. So go forward to the job directly. Okay, we have not created a job. So we can create job trust, job trust. Okay, so continue. Okay, we will keep the default like this. And now we will submit the job. Submit it. Okay, now Abacus will submit this job and it will start analyzing. So you can say that uh, the monitoring, the status is running. So it is running, it is giving some warnings, etc. Okay, if the warnings are uh, very important, then take care of them. Otherwise, you can just neglect them. Now you can see that the status is completed. Now we can straight away go to the results in order to see the, uh, the field output variables that are of interest to us. So just press this results button. Okay, so you can see that yes, you are into you are into the visualization module. Okay, so let us start uh, reviewing the various uh, field outputs. The first one is uh, the one mices. Uh, here we have select S11, which basically indicates the access trusses in the members. So remember that these trusses are in kilometer per meter square. So if you multiply, for example, this access trusses by the area, you obtain the forces in the various members. Okay, so now let us just investigate using the prop values. What are the stresses in the various members? Go to tools and query prop values. For example, if you see this uh, this member, you can see that just we see that because we have to select the, the elements because we are going to investigate the stresses. So we'll select the element phase, we're fine. So we we'll see select from the viewport. Okay, fine. So here you, you can see that this member has got a stress of uh, minus 14,583 kilometer per meter square. And on the other hand, this vertical member has got a stress of 40,000 40, kilometer per meter square. So using the prop values, we'll be able to directly obtain the access stress in the various members. And now that's all for the warmizers. Now let me just uh, take you to the deformed shape of this uh, truss. I'll just press a deformed shape. So you can see that here, yes. So I have plotted both the undeformed shape as well as the deformed shape. And for this, what you need to do is that you have to just press this button, allow multiple plot states. Okay. So here you can see that uh, the displacements, we are interested in basically the U2, that is the displacement in the downward direction. U2, so this is the U2. So you can see that the various the values of the U2 at various nodes are listed here. So here again you can see that all the values are in meters. So ensure that the displacements at the various nodes are as per our uh, uh, you know feeling. For example, uh, the node 4 is pinned means that the deformation here should be 0, 0. And on the other hand, 2 is uh, basically it's a roller support that is on an inclined plane. It means that we expect both U1 and U2, so that is already uh, seen here over this display. And uh, we have got a vertical load at this joint, means that the joint should move downward. So that is very clear to us. Now, uh, another thing is that um, we will uh, we'll be able to also obtain these values directly from that uh, query also. You can just query the pro values, okay? And the pro values, uh, we, are, we will go for select from the viewport. Then you can have the nodes, okay? So, for example, if you are seeing that uh, this node, okay, you can see that is zero to minus thirty-seven. That's almost zero. And on the other hand, we find that uh, the node two, okay, the node two has got uh, 
around the 0.000272 meters. Okay, that means almost a 0.3 millimeters. Okay, U2. So this query uh, pro values section can also be utilized in order to write these values. Okay, suppose that we want to write the axial stresses in the various numbers and also the deformations at the various nodes through this dialog box. So what we can do is that, so first we can go for, for example, we can say, suppose that we want to start with the on my S11, S11, okay. So you can go for uh, uh, just as usual tools, query, and we are interested in probing the values. So instead of selecting from the viewport, I would select it from a display group because I have got a display group already there. So prob I will because it's an element stresses. So select element stresses, select a display group. Okay. And uh, here you can select the display group. For example, I will select it as all. Okay. So here you will find that yes, all these values are displayed over here. Okay. And now these values, these values you can write to a file and which can be saved directly in the work directory. So if you just say write to file, okay. It will ask you, okay, the select is uh, the name, name of the file is, you can say that it's a stresses, okay. So you can say that, okay, which means that if you go to the work directory, you should see a file called stresses. Yes, just now it's created. You double click this file and open in the notepad. So you'll find that, yes, we have the various elements, one, two, three, four, five, and along with their axial stress values. Okay, so similarly, you can also append to this file the displacements as well. All right, so you can go to the displacement query options and then select the required nodes through the display group. So you can append this to the existing stress file. Okay, so this way we will be able to also obtain a report of the element stresses as well as the nodal displacements. So I think that that's all for this tutorial. Uh, we will come with a very interesting tutorials in the coming weeks. Uh, till then, thanks a lot.